Welcome to lesson four. In this lesson, we'll get some harder arithmetic sequence questions. Uh, we're not doing any new content. Same as lesson three, we're just looking at harder examples. Let's get started. <coughs> Quick revision in case you forgot in the last lesson. In an arithmetic sequence, the common difference between terms can be found by second term minus the first term. Now, it doesn't need to be the second and the first term. The point is, it has to be any two consecutive terms. And the reason for this is, by definition, an, a sequence is arithmetic because the difference between any two consecutive terms is the same. So you could do the third term minus the second term, or you could do the hundredth term minus the ninth term. As long as you subtract and find the difference between two consecutive terms, you will get the common difference. <clears throat> in fact, we can prove a sequence's arithmetic by the common difference formula. The second term minus the first term has to equal the third term minus the second term. Of course, it doesn't need to be the first, second, and third terms here. You could find, you could, you could prove that the, the difference between any three consecutive terms is the same, right? You could have, for example, the 50th term minus the 49th term would have to equal 51st term minus the 50th term, right? Any three consecutive ones, you'd have to show basically that the difference between them is the same. Because that's what an arithmetic sequence is. The common difference between each term is the same. It's adding or subtracting. Now, if you wanted to find a specific term of an arithmetic sequence, we'd use a very simple formula, a plus n minus 1d. Um, if you're finding, for example, the hundredth or the tenth term, right, we'd sub in n is equal to 10. In other words, every time we see n, we put 10 in. That would become t10 is equal to a plus 10 minus 1d, which would be 9. So a plus 9d. And that's it, really. Let's just do some harder questions now. All right, find k, given that 3k plus 1, k, and negative 3 are consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence. Well, we have three terms, and we know they're consecutive terms, and we know it's an arithmetic sequence, and we have to find k. Well, the common difference between them has to be the same. Let's use a common difference formula here. Uh, let's do it algebraically, similar to the quiz we did a little while ago in lesson three, I believe, last lesson. Okay, so the second term minus the first term has to equal the third term minus the second term. Now, I've color-coded it just to make things a little easier. So the second term, the one in the middle, would go first, tk, kth term, minus t of k minus 1, that is k minus 1th term, or t1, right? And the third term minus the second term, the third term minus the second term. And we substituted the correct stuff in, and we just solve it. k is equal to 2. That's a pretty simple algebraic equation. I'm sure you can do it without much help from me. All right, let's look at another question. Note here before we go further. <clears throat> the question was unusual, yes, but it wasn't particularly hard. You just have to recognize, um, you know, which formula we have to use. And it's clearly not the nth term formula because they're not asking us to find the nth term. Um, common difference formula. You should have been able to spot it, I guess. Uh, but just keep in mind, they look hard, but they're really not that hard. All right. Another question, harder one. Find the general term, the nth term, for an arithmetic sequence with the third term is equal to 8, and the eighth term is equal to negative 17. And a quick note, I've seen these type of questions in trial papers and HSC exams a fair bit. They're very, very common. This particular type of question is very common. Okay, so bro tip, anytime you don't know what to do, write down whatever we you know, and see if that helps. The HSC will only ever examine you on what you've studied. And what have we studied so far that has the nth term is in it? Well, the nth term formula. Now, we know the third term is a plus 2d is equal to 8. Uh, a plus 2d, it should be a plus n minus 1. n over here is 3. So 3 minus 1, which is 2. So a plus 2d is equal to 8. We know it's equal to 8 because they've told us the third term is 8. The formula for the third term is that and it's equal to 8, right? And we'll do something similar for the 8th term. The formula for it is a plus 7d, and it is equal to 17. Now, you have two equations and two variables. That is clearly a simultaneous equation, right? We solve it like simultaneous equation as per normal. Um, we note that a is common, so we can just subtract 
the, this, this, the eighth term, minus the third term, that'll get rid of the A, you get 5D, minus 25, 5D minus 25, and solve, you get D, easy, sub it back in, so you get A, A is equal to 18, now check, you always check, you must always check in an exam, so let's try it. Uh, for the third term, if we sub a is equal to 18 and d is equal to negative 5, do we get 8 or not? And similarly check with negative 17. It, honestly, it takes like 15 seconds in a calculator. Just check it and you'll know if you did it right or wrong. Alright, this is a HC question. Uh, 2014, question 12c. J is making a pattern using triangular tiles. The pattern has three tiles in the first row, five tiles in the second row, and each successive row has two more tiles than the previous row. And in the HSC exam, they actually included this graphic as well. <coughs> so we can see three tiles, three tiles in the first row, five tiles in the second row, and so on. It's going to keep on increasing. So how many tiles would J use in row 20? That was the question. That was the first part of the question, I guess. And we're not going to do the whole HSC question because we haven't done um, series yet, I guess. So we can't do the whole question. We're just going to do the first part, this part that you can see. How many tiles would J use in row 20? Well, let's make a pattern. Let's see the pattern. The, f the first row, three tiles. Second row, five tiles. Third row, seven tiles. It is increasing by two. As soon as you spot that it's increasing by a common difference, it's increasing by, by, you know, by one number, by two, every single row. But we know it's an arithmetic sequence. And when the first term is three, then the difference is two. So A is three, D is two. We just write down the formula, sub stuff in, and solve for T20. Fairly straightforward. 41. Uh, the twentieth row would have forty-one tiles. Now we haven't done some series, so we can't do the rest of the HS questions at this stage, which is okay. We'll do it later on, I guess. All right, example six: three numbers are consecutive terms in an arithmetic sequence. Their sum is forty-eight, and their product is twenty-eight hundred. Find the three numbers. Okay, this is probably the toughest one out of the ones we've done so far. So what we'll have to do for for this is. We have three consecutive terms, right? Let's assign them algebraic values. The first one can be u minus d, the second one will be u, third one will be u plus d. Now, <clears throat> what we did here is the middle number we let equal to u, and the one just before it, <clears throat> sorry, I'm kind of losing my voice. So we know they're consecutive terms, and in arithmetic sequence, there is a common difference. So let's say this was the tenth term, this is the ninth term, and this is the eleventh term. The difference between them would be the tenth term minus d would give you the ninth term, because there's a common difference between terms. And the tenth term plus d would give you the eleventh term. Now u is the middle number, and the smallest is u minus d, and so on. Now, if you can pause the video, um, just try to understand that you that this is, this is crucial. You really need to understand why and how we were able to do this. Right, and the key really is the common difference between terms going to be D. We don't know what D is, but that's okay. That's what we're going to figure out, right? For the time being, let's just keep it D. No, you don't write A because A is the first term. That's how we're using U. Anyway, so we know that their sum is 48. So if you add all of these together, you get 48. Let's see what happens. Let's, let's do that. Let's add them together. U minus Z plus U plus U plus D is equal to 48. Simplify the minus D and the plus D will cancel out. So you get 3U is 48, U is 16. Oh, great. We've got the middle term. Middle term is 16. Now we just need to find the common difference. Well, we used this and we got U. We haven't even touched that. We haven't even touched, you know, the product is 2,800. So let's do that next. You know, see what we get. And no, um, you could have done the product first. And you'd end up with, you know, that equation. And you wouldn't be able to do anything with it. So then you'd try doing the sum is 48 and see what happens. Like, we know the solution is going to involve stuff that we've done, right? It's, it's not a mystery. So we just give it a go and the solution will open up. Um, especially in two unit. Uh, the questions in general, except for the very last question, the questions will be fairly... Like, they'll work themselves out. Like, if you just give it a go, and you're kind of using, you know, what you've learned, just give it a go, the questions will just work out. And if you've been doing um, a lot of past paper questions, 
then in the HSC exam you'll walk in and you will literally have seen around 89% of the paper already because the questions repeat, they're very similar and yeah, you'll repeat. Anyway, so let's go back to the question. We The product is 2,800, so u minus d times u times u plus d is 2,800. Simplify and you get that. Now we can't really simplify this further, you know, I mean, you could do u cubed minus u d squared, that just gets ugly. I, I, it's, it's simple to keep like this. But the thing is, we know what u is. We know what u is. u is 16. So let's just sub in u is equal to 16 and we'll be left with only d. That's easy, right? Sub it in. d left only. d is equal to plus or minus 2 is minus 175. d is equal to plus or minus 9. And now you might be thinking, well, why do we have two answers? Well, we have two answers because the difference could be plus 9 or minus 9. The sequence of numbers could be going up or it could be going down, right? But either way, the number, three numbers are going to be 7, 16, 25 if they were going up, if the difference between the numbers was plus 9. But they could also be 25. Sorry, my son just came. Just give me a second. Sorry about that. But either way, we have our three numbers, right? That could be 7, 16, 25, or it could be 25, 16, 7. And the difference, therefore, plus or minus 9. It doesn't matter either way because the question only really asks us to find the three numbers. The three numbers will be the same. 7, 16, 25, or 25, 16, 7. Same way. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, this is the last one for today. So, but sir is a cartoonist. I wonder where I got that name from. He draws cartoons for a living and sells them to magazines. He recently got a contract with a new magazine, so he sends them the 28 comic strips he already has drawn. So he's already got 28 comic strips, right? Um, but he can only make three comic strips a week, right? So each week thereafter, he mails in three more comic strips to the magazine as per his contract. So he's already got 28, so he'll start off by sending in 28. And then each week thereafter, he's going to mail in three more. He can, he can only draw three a week. Find the total number of comic strips sent after the first, second, third, and fourth weeks. Well, the first week is going to have 28. Okay, just before we go further, note A is going to be 28, because the first thing, first week, A is 28. And the difference is going to be three, because it's going to increase by three. So 28 comic strips in week one. And the question is saying find the total number of comic strips sent. It's not saying how many comic strips are sent per week. It's saying the total the sum of all of the comic strips sent after a certain number of weeks. So in the first week he has 28. In the second week he has 28 plus 30, which is 31. Right? In the third week it'll be 34. It's going to increase by 3. So it's, it's the sum of all of them. Okay? Uh, okay, so fairly self-explanatory. Show that the total number of comic strips sent after n weeks forms an arithmetic sequence. Well, the common difference is 3 and starts off at 28. The, 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 you know, the pattern is going to be an arithmetic regression because it's increasing by a common amount, a common number of 3. And by definition, that's an arithmetic sequence. Find the number of comic strips sent after 15 weeks. T of n. We use the T of n formula. T of 15. Right, we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have n is equal to 15. So solve for T of 15. Sub in n is equal to 15. And you get 28 plus 15 minus 1, which is 14. 14 times 3. 28 plus 14 times 3. Um, and you'll get after 15 weeks, 70 comic strips will have been sent. Now, when does Butzer send his 120th comic strip? All right, so 25 plus 3n is equal to 120. Now, don't freak out. We didn't really do anything fancy. We just sub uh, n is equal to 120 in over here. Okay, so 28 plus n minus 1 times 3. And if you just sub in... Uh, you know, you simplify this for n, just, just simplify it, 3n minus 3, right? Just expand this out, 3n minus 3, 28 minus 3 is 25, 
and you get 3n. So we haven't done anything fancy here. And it will be equal to 120 because, you know, 120th comic strip. And we have, to, we have to solve for n. Now we solve that easy algebra equation, you get n is equal to 31 and 2 thirds. So Batsa sends his 120th comic strip in the 32nd week. Now these sort of questions can be confusing, confusing. always check on a calculator. Uh, just, just sub it in, check. Um, and when I say these sort of questions, I mean when the answers are a fraction, uh, just, just sub it in. Just sub it n is equal to 30, n is equal to 31, n is equal to 32, and you know, you'll, the answer will come out, I guess. Alright, that's it for today. Uh, make sure you do the homework sheet.